Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. Let's talk dynamic replicators, where we can take this cute little penguin and do this to him. Oh my, I don't think PETA would be very happy with me right now. All right, so let's set this guy up. Okay, so the first thing we need in setting up my dynamic replicator is to add a regular replicator. So I've got my prototype here already down here. In the schematic, you can just drag him down there, hit add selected. I'm gonna hide him right now because we don't need to see him in the scene. And I'm going to add item, start typing in replicator. And hey, look, there's dynamic replicator at the top, but we're not actually gonna add that. We're gonna get to that in just a second. We're gonna add a regular replicator like that and drag it down here and hook up our pink one to the prototype. And typically you would be adding a for the particle source, like a piece of geometry or maybe a particle cloud or a PMOD, which is a sort of a static particle field. Um, for instance, if I took my cannon here and, and hooked it up as a particle source, then you know all those vertices become the source for my penguin. Wow, that looks pretty sweet. That's not what we're doing here. What we want is a dynamic particle source. So I'm actually going to go over here to my particle tab. You can just press um, this little joint here when you get over to uh, setup and particles, then add a radial emitter. That'll work. I'm going to parent this to my cannon in case I want to animate it later so I can sort of drag it over. Press control while you're dragging and drop it on the cannon. And instead of parenting in place, it'll actually um, change the transforms to put it where the cannon's uh, pivot is. I'll just tweak that a little bit, maybe rotate it a little bit. And I'm going to change the cone angle way down, something like 10. Looks pretty good, maybe. Press Alt S for selection action center so I can just go like that on the handle and stick it down in the cannon. Like so, okay, getting there. So what that did when I added this um, uh, emitter there is it also added a particle simulation node to the scene. Let me drag these two down here. So the emitter goes into the particle simulation node as an operator. Particle simulation node gives me some controls. Right now, if I press the leftmost triangle, I'm just running the simulation at whatever current frame I'm at, okay? So it's not taking into account any keyframe animation or the timeline or anything like that. It's just running the dynamic properties at this frame. Now, by default, Moto's particles are really hard to see. They're gray, they're like one pixel. So I'm gonna you know, bump this up to, I like to make them blue. Over here in the particle simulation node, you can, whoops, you can see that I can change their color and I can also change their size. Now we can actually see them, how nice. So as you can see, they're just sort of shooting up in the air. There's no gravity affecting them. So we want to turn on gravity. That's actually in the particle simulation node. So you'll see the gravity acceleration is right there. If you remember from physics class, 9.8 meters per second squared and click use gravity. For whatever reason, this doesn't update while the simulation is playing. Well, most parameters do for whatever reason, this one does not. So I'm just gonna stop and restart. You'll see that gravity is pulling those down now, but we need to shoot them out with a little more force. So. Grab the radial emitter. Um, this mode, this one right here, play at current frame, is great for you know tweaking because you can just play and start messing around with uh, parameters until you're happy with what you have. So if I turn down the emission rate a little bit and uh, you know maybe bump up the initial velocity to like you know two meters per second or something like that, I'm I'm starting to get there. Maybe eight. Now we're getting there a little bit better. Not quite. Maybe nine. I'm picking nine. That'll do it. Boom. And uh, that's really annoying. It's nice you see a big magnitude there, I guess, but I'm actually gonna hide that radial emitter. It doesn't stop my simulation from going because that's the particle simulation node, which I wanna keep visible. If I hide that, it will hide it, but I'll keep that visible there. And that's looking pretty good. So now we are going to hook this up to the replicator. Now I'm shooting penguins out. The penguins are just following those particles. Um, and I can even make the particles, you know, bounce off the target and bounce off the floor. But I don't want to do, and the penguins will follow that, but I will really want the simulation to take the penguins' geometry into account. So the penguins will bounce off each other. You hear that jet going by? <laughs> All right, we have a jet going overhead. My office in Silicon Valley is very close to the NASA Moffett Air Force Base. And that is some rich asshole from Google landing his private jet or maybe Apple, I don't know, that's my guess. Or it's military and we're at war. Anyway, what do we do with the penguins? Well, I'm gonna stop the simulation for a second and I'm gonna select my replicator and there is, I'm not, I don't need to manually add a dynamic replicator to the scene. What's cool is Moto will actually hook all this stuff up for me. I just go to my dynamics tab 
and I hit active rigid body. What that's gonna do is it's going to give uh, rigid body uh, parameters to the prototype and add a simulation node. So let me just drag this down so you can see what's added to the scene. Active rigid body, it's added both a solver and a dynamic replicator to the scene. You also notice that these little diamonds here have a yellow outline. That means there's more connections there that aren't exposed yet. And if I just double click it, I'll see the connections. So if I double click this guy, there is my dynamic replicator inserted between my gummy penguin and the particle simulation. There's another little yellow thing there. And there's my actual uh, solver. That's my physics solver right there, that node right there. Okay, so now what do we have going on if I press this button? Well, they're just shooting through all this stuff like they were a minute ago, although it looks like they're maybe tumbling a little more or something like that. Um, still not what we want. We need to create uh, static rigid bodies out of these items to make them collidable. So I select my target, I go to uh, static rigid body, and I select my four, and I say static rigid body. Now when I play, they're all bouncing off the target and hitting the four which is what I want. They're also colliding with each other. So that's the basics of it. Now we can of course go in and um, do some additional tweaking to this. For instance, I don't like that they're all the same size, right? Or the same rotation when they when they fly out of there. And what's cool is we do have a dynamic, um, because we're using a replicator for the geometry, we have access to all of these channels on the replicator to randomize the size and rotation and things like that. Also, they're intersecting my uh, cannon there, so I can always go back to my gummy plugin. In fact, I'll just do this while it's playing. Um, press three for polygon mode. I'm just gonna shrink down my penguin. And now it's sort of shooting out of the cannon a little better. Um, there we go, something like that. <laughs> and uh, click that, now we're back in item mode. And I can select my replicator and adjust some of these parameters here, like random twist, 180, then hit uh, Control Alt and hit Return, and now they're all rotated. And I can also go down to random scale. It's sort of hard to do this with just in the constraints of 1920 by 1080 for this recorded video. Okay, I'll say 25%, Control Alt Enter, does it for all three channels. Now we've got different size penguins and, and uh, different rotations, things like that, bouncing around, looking pretty good. Hitting my target there. All right, that looks pretty good. Generally pretty happy with this scene right here. I can uh, drag this back down, hide my gummy replicator. Uh, I can hide my locators now if I want. And if I press um, this far right button, it's going to actually record the simulation. And it's gonna do it super fast, like frame zero to 150, hit okay and it's just done like that. So I can now scrub through it, and there we go. Um, you can increase the accuracy of the simulation if you want to. There's a couple things you can do. If I select my dynamic replicator, I can actually change the collision shape from hull to mesh, which is more accurate. A hull is um, sort of, the, there's a nice tooltip there, the smallest convex shape that encompasses all the points of the mesh. So it's getting cut off there by the recorder, but uh, mesh is actually going to take the actual geometry of the penguin into account, so it's going to be more accurate. I can also knock this margin down here to five millimeters, make it a little more accurate, and then redo my simulation. It's going to take longer, um, but it'll be a little more accurate. And here it is with uh, mesh collision settings. Oh, look at that guy flying, <laughs> flying by there. Um, yeah, more accurate. Not as much. Uh, there's a little bit of a head going through there, but you could dial in um, accuracy as much as you want. I'm not sure how much it matters, but anyway, there you go. Dynamic replicators. Yum, yum.